Hey guys, how are you doing? Have you ever felt overwhelmed by the number of unread emails sitting in your inbox? Did you ever wonder how you can get ahead of the ever-growing flood of emails coming at you? <laughs> well, you're not alone. I've seen countless high-efficient professionals who had an inbox filled with thousands of unread mails. Some even declared inbox bankruptcy, stating that they could not keep up. But it doesn't matter whether you get only a handful or over 100 emails a day. It is more about the process than the volume of your daily email, whether you feel like the master or the victim of your emails. I promise you that you can reduce the mental load and the pain of dealing with email by up to 90% by following a simple system. You first have to understand that every email is a decision. Every decision is a question you need to answer. And every decision you haven't answered is taking up more mental energy because it is running in the back of your head, right? So let's take a moment and think about this. Consider an inbox with 1000 emails, no matter whether they are read or not, as long as they are in your inbox. That means there are 1000 decisions you haven't taken, 1000 questions you haven't answered, and 1000 times you've procrastinated. <laughs> no wonder it feels overwhelming and you are about to give up. But don't throw the towel yet. There is a way to get ahead of email, no matter how bad it is for you. Successful people know that decision making is one of the hardest tasks. That is why they try to standardize as much of these decision processes as possible. Steve Jobs made the decision early on that he would wear the same outfit as one way of eliminating the mental load of deciding every day anew what to wear. That way, he knew that his mind was free and available for more important decisions ahead. Now, you don't need to follow in his footsteps with your clothing, but what you could do is predefine as many decisions as possible when it comes to your mail workflow. But how do you do that? The first step to taming your email inbox is to define your process for working with mail. Think about the categories or types of emails you receive. Write them down. You might check your emails of the last day or week as a starting point. Here are some general categories of mails you might get in a week. Tasks, newsletters, appointments, invoices, recommendations, reference information, marketing material, and of course, spam. Now for each category, you then need to predefine the types of questions you need to answer and the default answers you will give. Let's take a look at the simple flowchart as an example. Here you see some of the basic questions you need to ask and answer for each type of email. The first question is the action question. Do I need to do something about it? If the answer is yes, ask yourself if you can complete the task in under two minutes. If you can, do it right away. If not, create a reminder linking to this email so you can tackle the task later. The second question is the filing question. Do I need to keep this email for reference? If the answer is yes, decide where you want to file it. If not, simply delete it. This will help keep your inbox clutter free. And lastly, we have the follow up question. Even after I've replied, do I need to follow up whether the recipient has answered? If the answer is yes, create a reminder so you don't forget to check back on that email. On the left side of the graphic, you see four actions you will do with each email. You can trash it and maybe unsubscribe from it if possible. You can file it somewhere. You can create a reminder with a link to it somewhere and you can act upon it. The two minute rule borrowed by David Allen is the only exception for separating processing mail from doing the actual work. The less time you spend on your standardized processing of mail, the more time you have to actually work. Now that might include reading longer mails, researching for it, replying to it or doing any kind of work associated with it. But this is work time versus mail maintenance time. And that is why I'm a big believer in separating these two domains. Acting on your mail, especially the included actions, should be for the most part be separated from you organizing and processing the mail. The filing can be done either in a folder within your email application or in an external folder. I actually use both. Most of my filing will happen inside the email app, either in a general archive 
or in a specific client folder if it is a client related email. For projects, I often export mails in a cloud file system where I then can store it with other documents and attachments concerning the project. I actually prefer this because once the project is finished, I can then archive everything, including key emails in a folder or even give it away to the client. With Apple Mail, it is as simple as dragging the mail to a folder. This drag and drop can be also done on the iPad and even on the iPhone. If you don't know how, check out this video. For reminders, you should use a tool which allows you to connect the email. I use the Apple Reminders for it, although I know that apps like Things3 or OmniFocus have even better mail integrations. Linking to a mail from Apple Mail into Reminders is actually pretty easy. There are several ways I have mentioned in this video, but one way you can easily do it is select a part of the text or the subject line and then right click, then share, select Reminders. And you see that you will get a link back to the email within Reminders. You can click on the I symbol or at the bottom to change the date to be reminded. And at the bottom of this list, you can also select the list where you want to place the reminder. Before I create a reminder, I always ask myself whether a short reply below two minutes might be enough to get the ball rolling. Then I would reply immediately and only create a reminder if I wasn't sure the person will get back and I need to follow up. One thing I do is I actually use the flags on my Apple Mail system as a quick reminder if I know I will reply today. Say I am at a dentist and can't answer now because I don't have access to files. Then flagging is enough of a reminder for me to get back once I am in my office. However, this only works if the rule is that no flag should be there for more than 24 hours. You don't want to have flags all over your 100,000 emails. So you see it doesn't matter whether you use one or several reminder strategies as long as you have documented them and use them consistently. There is no need to be religious about it. There is a lot of power in writing the decisions down. Once you've documented your system in this way, you will be crystal clear about how to deal with all of these types of emails and your decision process will be mostly on autopilot, reducing 90% of the mental load and associated fear that often comes with lots of emails. You don't need to create an elaborate flowchart for that. Creating a simple text document is all it takes. In the description below, I will link to a default text document in which I give you an example on how to do this. And you don't have to do it this way, but once you've created your own process document, you will experience a clarity and ease like never before when it comes to mail. So I highly recommend it to you. Now, if you have a lot of emails in your inbox, the process of cleaning it up might be too much to do in one session. For this, you need to use the backlog folders method. It is the key method for clearing up a large inbox and implementing the defined process. The purpose of the backlog folder is to temporarily store all the emails that you haven't yet processed or made decisions on. And this helps to clear up your main inbox and reduces the mental clutter of having countless unread emails staring at you. To start using the backlog folder, simply create a separate folder in your email client and name it backlog or any other name that suits you. As you go through your inbox, any email that you haven't yet processed or made a decision on should be moved to the backlog folder. It might actually be a good thing to move it all in the backlog folder and start from a clean inbox if you have something over 100 emails in your inbox. So anything greater than you can do in one session. The backlog folder serves as a holding area for these emails, allowing you to focus on the ones that you have already processed and made decisions on. In this way, you can prioritize your attention and energy on the emails that require immediate action or response. There is just one cardinal rule here. There is only one way with your backlog folder once you've put all your old inbox emails into it. And the only way is out. You are not allowed to add more mails to it. All your new mails need to be processed as discussed. Once you have processed all the emails in your inbox, you can then start working on the emails in the backlog folder. This is where the defined process and the questions for each category of email come into play. As you work through the backlog folder, apply the defined process and answer the questions for each email. 
Decide if you need to take action, file it for reference or follow up on it. By doing this, you are systematically making decisions on each email and reducing the mental load associated with them. With each decision, you will reduce the backlog folder by one email. It's important to set aside dedicated time to work through the backlog folder regularly. This can be done daily, weekly or whatever frequency works best for you. By establishing a regular routine, you can ensure that the backlog folder will one day be gone and your inbox stays organized forever. Also, it might make sense to sort the backlog folder by either date or sender name. Sorting by sender name might allow you to make similar decisions for a group of mails coming from the same sender. Unfortunately, this is not possible on iOS currently, so you need a Mac for that. But maybe you want to process all of your Amazon mails in one go and then it's a great option. Another strategy is to leave the backlog folder as it is, call it backlog 2023 or something like it, and only process new mails. I leave the choice to you. Using the backlog folder method, you can effectively clean up a large inbox and eliminate the pain of dealing with a flood of emails. By defining your process, categorizing emails and utilizing the backlog folder, you can make email management more efficient and reduce the mental burden associated with it. Okay folks, there you have it. With this easy system, I get through 100 or more emails in about 30 to 60 minutes or even less depending on the type of emails and how much action is needed for each. But no matter how long, the mental fatigue I experienced earlier is no more, once I've created my decision process. I hope this makes your email routine way less painful and actually enjoyable again. And if you want to eliminate even more stress in your life, check out the next video about the one app you should have on all your devices to capture everything. Check it out and I'll see you soon. Bye.